next video to get you ready for the first part of Chapter 8 quiz and for the Chapter 8 test is reviewing Section A3, which is everybody's favorite because it was all about trig. So it was looking at trig integrals. We did two days worth. One day you were focusing all on sines and cosines in some combination, and one day all on secants and tangents in some combination. So what I did in this video is I have two of each day, so two sine cosine examples and two secant tangent examples. What makes this section a little easier is you do have a list of kind of guidelines and steps to follow. So you can take what you're given and look and see what identities will help me simplify it to something that I can integrate. So the very first one is actually only signs. It is sine to the fifth power. And one of our guidelines for this section says if we have a sine or a cosine to an odd power, what we do is we save one of them. So we kind of keep it in reserve. The reason we save it is it ends up being part of our dx our du piece, and then we take the rest of it, so what's left is a sine to the fourth, we write it as 1 minus cosine squared using that Pythagorean identity, and then since it has to be done twice, I then square that. So you have the 1 minus cosine squared 2x there twice, writing it as squared. One thing to keep in mind, make sure your angle doesn't change as we go through this, it should still be 2x. First step I need to do is the algebra. I need to square out this binomial. So when I square it out, I'm going to square double square. I get 1 minus 2 cosine squared 2x plus cosine to the fourth 2x. My next step is to distribute. So I get the sine of 2x is a term all by itself. And then minus 2 cosine squared 2x sine 2x. And then plus cosine to the fourth 2x sine 2x. So I use whatever identity is appropriate, in this case the 1 minus cosine squared. I do the algebra to square it out, expand it, whatever needs to be done, distribute. And now I'm left with three pieces that I'm going to integrate. The first piece is my easiest, but sometimes people kind of overlook it. The integral of sine is negative cosine. We will have a 1 half adjustment, so we get negative 1 half cosine 2x. The second and the third one are actually going to have the same u sub, so I'm just going to write it kind of in the middle of them. Both of them, the u is going to be the cosine 2x, because remember, the reason that you saved a sine 2x is that's going to be part of your du. So the derivative of that is going to be 2 negative, excuse me, negative 2 sine 2x. So we will have a negative 1 half adjustment for each of these. So I like to write down what's happening here. I have a negative 2. I also have a negative 1 half adjustment and then I have a u squared du. And over here, I have a negative 1 half adjustment, and I have a u to the fourth du. In the first one, my negatives will cancel, and so will my twos. I am integrating u squared, which gives me u to the third over 3, so I end up with cosine to the third of 2x over 3. And then in my last piece, I have, I end up with negative 1 half times u to the fifth over 5. So I end up with negative 1 tenth cosine to the fifth of 2x plus c. So my answer kind of snakes around a little bit are these three terms. First term, very short u substitution, just letting the u be the angle. You end up with that 1 half adjustment and it is negative. The second and the third one, both of them have the same u sub, so sometimes it's nice to kind of write it just once and see what adjustment has to be made. You can see the adjustment that was made for each one. And then make sure when you look at your final answer, make sure it's, it still has, in this case, the cosine of 2x and it doesn't have like an x or something like that that the angle doesn't change. The next one also came from that first day of 8.3, and this was when we had cosine or sine to an even power. These were the little more obscure identities. We have an identity for uh, cosine squared, and it is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to completely change the way this is written and write it as a 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So that is going to be 1 plus cosine of 8x, because what this 2 is saying is double the original angle. The original angle is 4x, so that's why it's 8x. It's one of the few times the angle actually changes, because the identity has it changed, over 2. If you want, you can bring this over 2 out front, so you can have a 1 half integral of 1 plus the cosine of 8x. If you want to pretzel it and just make everything over 2, that's fine as well. The integral of 1 is 
x, don't need to write the integration symbol again, the integral of 1 is x. The integral of cosine 8x is 1 eighth sine of 8x. So you can write as sine of 8x over 8, or 1 eighth sine of 8x plus c. Now keep in mind this whole thing, these two terms are multiplied by a half, so you can leave it like that, or you can write it as x over 2 plus sine of 8x over 16 plus c. I don't care which way you write it, as long as somewhere you realize the one half's there. If it's a multiple choice question, look at your options and see what they did if they left the one half out front or they distributed it back through. So that gives you an idea of what we do, and this, this only happens when you have a standalone cosine or sine to an even power. Um, if there's a mix of sines and cosines, you would use the Pythagorean identities. It's only whenever you just have sine or cosine to an even power that you have to use the more obscure double angle identities. The next two we're going to do looks at the combination of secants and tangents. Now for that we actually had a longer list, went through and said if secant is positive do this, if tangent is positive do this, if all else fails goes to sines and cosines. What we have here is an example where we have an odd number of tangents. If you have an odd number of tangent, what you want to do is um, keep a secant tangent and then get everything else to secants. So the way this looks is you're kind of pulling out a secant and a tangent. So we have a secant x over 2 and a tangent x over 2. And then what we have left is we have a secant squared left and we have a tangent squared left. But we're going to convert that tangent squared to secants. We're using the identity. So we're going to take our tangent squared. Here's the identity. Tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So we're going to take that tangent squared and write it as secant squared of x over 2 minus 1. So basically holding on to, saving, conserving a secant tangent because that's going to be our du piece and then getting everything else to secants because the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So I'm going to not going to do anything with the secant tangent piece. If you want, you can put it at the very end. You can keep it at the very beginning. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do some of the distributing for all of this over here. I'm going to distribute the secant squared through. So I get secant to the fourth of x over 2 minus secant to the second of x over 2. If you want to distribute that through just so you can see it, you have a secant to the fourth x over 2 and then you have this secant tangent secant x over 2, tangent x over 2. I am not multiplying these secants together, even though I know they could be, because I want to keep that secant tangent as like a separate entity, because it's my du piece. And then I have the minus secant squared x over 2 with a secant tangent. And again, I'm keeping that as a separate piece, because that's my du piece. Both of these are going to have the same u sub, so I'm just going to write it once. My u is the secant of x over 2. That's the piece that is having something done to it in both terms. My derivative of that is 1 half secant x over 2 tangent x over 2. So my adjustment is actually a times 2 adjustment. So for this first one, I have the times 2 adjustment, and then I have u to the fourth du. And for this one, I have, it's still subtracting, I have a minus 2 for the adjustment, and I have u to the second du. So the first one ends up being 2u to the 5th over 5, which is 2 times secant to the 5th of x over 2 over 5, minus this one ends up being 2u to the 3rd over 3. It is still subtracted. So minus 2 secant to the 3rd of x over 2 over 3 plus c. So this was the technique. If we had an odd number of tangent factors, we keep a secant and a tangent together. That becomes that du piece that gets conserved the whole time. And then everything else goes to secants so that in the end we can let u be secant and du be the secant tangent that I saved. So here, kind of circle it is my answer. Last problem on this video is if we just have secant and it's to an even power, if we just have secant to an even power, we're going to save a secant squared, because again, that's going to be my du piece. And then in this case, we have one other secant squared. We're going to write that as 1 plus tangent squared, using again our Pythagorean identity that deals with secants and tangents. I'm going to distribute 
So I get secant squared 5x plus tangent squared 5x secant squared 5x. The first piece is very straightforward. The u is just 5x, so we do have a 1 fifth adjustment. Um, but the integral of secant squared is tangent. So I end up with 1 fifth the tangent of 5x. The second piece is a little more involved. We're going to let u be the tangent of 5x. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, so I have 5 secant squared 5x. That's the reason that we saved that secant squared in the beginning. So I do have a 1 fifth adjustment. So this is going to be a 1 fifth u squared du, because that's what's being done to tangent. So I have 1 fifth u to the third over 3 when I integrate it. So my final answer, let me just bring down this first piece, 1 fifth tangent of 5x, or you can write it as tangent of 5x over 5, plus tangent cubed of 5x over 15 plus c. And what you'll see as you do these, the biggest things to watch are your adjustments, the du adjustment, mainly the like fractional adjustment, your signs, watching your pluses and minuses, and then making sure you do your algebra right. Whenever you are transferring everything to a particular trig function, make sure you're distributing right, make sure you're squaring things right, and then other than that, you're following the guidelines. So this shows you four examples, all of the trig, two from day one, sine and cosine, two from day two, which was secant and tangent.